Lady Cora lay half asleep under the weeping willow as the late afternoon rain dripped from the branches onto her forehead. She jolted upright from a sudden chill in the air and looked at the clouded sky. The open page of her small leather book was dotted with droplets. It was time to retreat back to the castle. She ran her fingers through her hair and straightened her green dress. She wrapped her cloak around her shoulders. She made her way through the green wood. Cora had walked through the wood before. Fairies had kept her company. Sometimes they attempted to nest in her hair. Tinkering gnomes built small bridges for shortcuts. Cora was given special permission to use these bridges for safe passage. Today, she didn't see any of the forest creatures. Instead, she was greeted by music. As it played, the rain evaporated from the sky, replaced with bright rays of light. Pink flowers blossomed and floated from the treetops. She thought it was all very beautiful, but paled in comparison to the injured white wolf curled at the base of the hill of flowers. One of the wolf's legs was shaking, an arrow sticking out from the side, and a streak of dried blood on its paws. Enchanted by its ethereal beauty, Cora strode over and expected the wound. The wolf watched her, but did not move. She removed the arrow and ripped a long piece of fabric from her cloak and wrapped it around the leg. After she bandaged the wolf, it leapt onto the flower bed and tilted its head towards her. Then it howled. After a second time, it walked behind the hill and out of sight. The music trailed after the wolf. On impulse, Cora decided to follow it. When she reached the top, Cora marveled at the sight a field of clovers, and in the center, an apple tree stood. Beneath the tree, a stranger, dressed like a nobleman, sat playing an elegant wooden flute with his eyes closed. Flyerflies circled the tree, making it glow even though the sun was still up. Cora was in awe. Slowly, she walked toward the apple tree, unable to take her eyes off the stranger. His skin looked so soft, unblemished. She had an aching desire to touch it. When Cora reached the tree, the stranger stopped playing and opened his eyes. But when he did, she was terrified. His eyes were solid yellow with pitch black pupils that burned her soul. Cora backed away. The stranger did not take his eyes off her. At his side, the wolf from behind approached. Then another wolf appeared, and another, until after that, the clearing was consumed by the pack. Shadows from the wolves consumed the light and emerged as yellow-eyed people. Cora did not know what to do. She was too frightened to think. She closed her eyes and prayed to be woke up from this nightmare. When she opened her eyes, the clearing was empty and the sun shone through the trees. Everything was the same as when she entered the green wood, except the music was gone. She sighed in relief. Then strong jaws clamped onto her throat, easily piercing the skin. Blood trickled down her breasts and seeped into her dress. She could feel as the liquid drained out of her veins. Her muscles ached and she was growing tired. She closed her eyes and drifted off. The stranger held onto her waist as he inhaled her long locks of hair. He moaned in pleasure. He licked his lips. I wonder how much blood this girl will spill for me. The noble lifted her into his arms and grinned, a pair of red-stained fangs poking past his lips. With one last glance toward the apple tree, he walked out of the thicket with his bride and white wolf at his side. <laughs>